Introducing first from Japan, weighing in at 250 pounds, Mr. Saito. His opponent from Tampa, Florida, weighing in at 228 pounds, Steve Kerr. This is the match that everybody's talked about. Steve Kern going up against Mr. Saito. An open challenge with $5,000 on the line. It'll be interesting to see exactly what uh, these men will do. Beautiful arm drag takedown by Kern as Saito is testing him for weight, leverage, and balance. And the collar and elbows a hug, duck under, go behind, or sideways, and Kern turns that to his own advantage with a bottom wrist lock, a lateral drop, and a takedown. Kern now up with the top wrist lock, and Saito back to his feet. And Kern will battle a man like Saito with a vengeance. Could go behind once again. Saito utilizing the ring ropes this time. High, high, waist lift takedown. And it is Saito into those ropes and Kern right on top of him. The back suit play by uh, Saito has Kern stunned. Kern striking the uh, back of his head coming down. Now the Russian leg sweep on Steve Kern and Saito moving into that lateral. No, sir. Kern powers out. And Kern trying to get it together now has been dazed. Saito, pair of forearms across the back. He missed with that one. Caught a beautiful cross body block along with that forearm. No, sir. Saito came out before the count of three. Turn to inside cradle. Again, into those ropes, and Saito powering away from it. Kern overhooks into a front chancery. Saito catches him. One in the midsection and a thrust into the throat. Variation of the fireman carry takedown and turn on the ropes. On the ropes. No, sir. Saito thought he had it one, but Kern had his foot on the ropes. And so Kern will pull out every stop to make sure he uh, gains this match. Saito, a single leg pick. Kern caught him very nicely. Again, a lateral press. No, sir. Saito using the ring ropes this time. him out vertically and that may be all she wrote Kern made just a no but for a moment maybe Kern had himself five thousand dollars again Saito utilizing the ring rope forces the break Kern moves against him arm whips him off the rope catches him in the sleeper he's got the sleeper Steve Kern has got the sleeper on Mr. Saito and Saito and no one extra makes it to the ropes and Saito in trouble now. Uh -oh. And that was as deliberate as anything I've ever seen. Saito deliberately pushing Steve Kern over that. And Kern wants his 5,000. Kern wants his 5,000. Kern wants his 5,000, and I can't say that I've... Well, Saito disqualified. Let me talk to Steve Kern about this. It's obvious that... Uh, Four, ten minutes, eh, Gordon? It sure was. I won the match, didn't I? You sure did. There's no stipulations how you win, is there? Well, he has said that nobody could pin him within uh, ten minutes, but uh, nonetheless, he my said nobody could beat him. That's right. I beat him. Five thousand. I want my five thousand. Well, obviously, uh, Mr. Saito doesn't feel that way, and it was, a, to me, a very, very apparent, obvious, deliberate disqualification. Sa Saito again tonight in Griffin. If he ain't gonna give me the money, I'm just gonna have to take it out of his butt. Well, there you have Canada away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this tag team event will be one fall with a TV time limit. Introducing first from Georgia, weighing it at 230 pounds, Jack Poor. From Marion, Ohio, weighing it at 235 pounds, Charlie Fulton. Their opponents from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing it at 226 pounds, Kevin Sullivan. From Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing it at 242 pounds, the universal heartthrob, the one, the only, Austin Idol. Austin Idol and Kevin Sullivan going up against Jack Poor and Charlie Fulton. 
and uh, one would have to uh, say that Sullivan and Idol uh, would be favored in this match, but one thing about wrestling, uh, the count of three can move very swiftly. One mistake, and all of a sudden those shoulders are down for a count of three. And so you can never say that uh, a particular match is a foregone conclusion. Toehold by Austin Idol now. That's Fulton. On the canvas. Austin Idol. Uh, Las Vegas has his home. Kevin Sullivan, of course, from Boston, Massachusetts. He was a New England, uh, I believe, I would have to, I, I might stand correct on this, but uh, in the amateur ranks, he took a New England title. And it's Sullivan in there. Sullivan will utilize his legs very quickly in a match. And of course, the legs being the most powerful members of the body. Serve in good stead. And there you see uh, Idol going after the left leg of Charlie Fulton, having made the tag with uh, Kevin Sullivan. Now you'll note the hole that uh, Idol has here, bending that leg backward, has to stretch that uh, ligament across the front of the knee. Those knee injuries are uh, extremely prevalent in uh, pro wrestling pro football and uh, in baseball. Good. Hip lock takedown by Sullivan. This, of course, is what makes the figure four leg lock that uh, Austin Idol uses so effectively uh, such a dangerous hold. That's the hold, of course, that uh, brought uh, Jack Briscoe the World Heavyweight Championship. And a lot of competitors now are really studying and beginning to use the application of the figure four. Jack Four taken down now with a uh, hip lock takedown by Austin Idol. Figure four, of course, that was uh, ultimately and totally uh, perfected by Eddie Graham, who in turn uh, passed along that knowledge to his son, Mike Graham, and to uh, Jack Briscoe. Uh, Austin Idol has now uh, become extremely efficient with it, as has uh, Ted DiBiase, who uses a combination of the uh, spinning toe hole in figure four. Good fireman carry takedown by Kevin Sullivan. Sullivan with a float over now, trying to keep the lateral press poor. Powers out, however, before the count of three. Hip lock takedown again by Sullivan. Poor reaching out to make that tag. And uh, Fulton coming over to this side of the ring, around the corner, which is legal. And Poor trying to force the break, cannot. Fulton reaching out with that hand, but I don't believe Poor can see it, nor is he aware of it. And again, Fulton moving to the other side of the corner. He's a good tag team partner. He was uh, very, very concerned about being in the uh, most propitious position for the tag. And Fulton, having made the tag now, flashing out with some hard right hands, and even the midsection smashes uh, Sullivan into the turnbuckle. Four snap mares into the canvas. Sullivan powers out before the count of three. Makes the tag. Austin Idol in the ring. Idol. Explodes with a hard right hand. Idol catches him again. And Idol now using lefts very, very efficiently. A roundhouse right that puts Fulton back to the canvas. And it is Fulton firing back and caught him under the ribcage that time. Double him up. And so Charlie Fulton beginning to explode on Austin Idol. Makes the tag. Jack Poor moves into the ring now. Poor in the black trunks, driving the knee to the midsection of Austin Idol. Poor brings him up. Full body slam. Poor again moves in. Idol catches him just over the heart. One to the side of the jaw. Drops four to the canvas. Austin Idol trying to go for that figure four. Tries to set that figure four. Poor battling it. Austin Idol gets down. Gets into the figure four. Austin Idol moved into that figure four very, very effectively and uh, scored the uh, scored the figure four leg lock on Jack Poor. Jack Poor conceding very quickly. And uh, may I just offer a 
moment of congratulation to you and to Austin Idol. Well, thank you very much, Gordon. You know, this is what's happening now. Me and Idol against the jailbirds. No matter what, no matter where we go, it's truth, justice, American way against backstabbers, back jumpers, and fence jumpers. I'm going to tell you one thing, boys. You've been out here talking what you're going to do, who you're going to do it to. Well, maybe you can do it to who you want to do it to except one people. That's me and Idol together. We stand together. Like he said, there won't be anything left of the free birds, jail birds, or backstabbers once we get a hold of them that one more time. I'll tell you what, I, I wanted to take a moment, if I may, to talk to Austin Idol because uh, during the match, uh, I was making mention of the fact, of course, uh, about the figure four and the fact that so many great competitors today are beginning to utilize the figure four. First of all, it's an extremely difficult hold to learn the proper application. You appear to have, have accomplished that goal. So has Ted DiBiase. Dick Slater has now become quite an expert with it. Of course, Jack Briscoe won the World Heavyweight Championship with it. Uh, I would assume, too, after seeing that the videotape earlier, you had the figure four on one of the free birds, and that's the thing that you're looking forward to doing again. Well, I did have the figure four, and then, uh, you know, you can go down the list, and it's a quite a lengthy list about uh, people who have used the figure four in the past and done quite well with it. Uh, as you probably recollect, I'm very, very sure the great buddy Rogers won the world's title with the figure four leg lock. Uh, Jack Briscoe, who uh, was one of the greatest world champions of all time, won the world championship with the figure four leg lock. And you see it sprouting up over and over. I mean, the Grahams have used the figure four leg lock. Now you say Slater's using the figure four leg lock. DiBiase's using the figure four leg lock. A lot of people are using the figure four leg lock. That's why I call my leg lock the Las Vegas leg lock because it is unique. Because the way I apply the pressure, I take that leg and I apply it over the knee in the spot that I know where the most pressure is because believe me, I've done a lot of investigating on this hold and I think I've got it down to a science now. I've got the best leg leg of all time. Yeah, an interesting observation from Mr. Idol. He has not lost any of his uh, humility. That's quite obvious. Let's take a moment now to talk about the Omni, the Thanksgiving Day night special. The Omni, 8 o'clock, Thursday night, November 27th. The world heavyweight champion, Harley Race, defends his title against Tony Atlas. Brad Armstrong against Mr. Saito. The $5,000 challenge and you gentlemen in the tag team tournament. The marbles are all on the line. You know, my whole dream, my whole dream is that the Freebirds and ourselves are against each other the first time. Because, you know, they talk about they're going to humiliate us. Well, you know, it gets down to it. It's like punk rock and roll versus rock, rock and roll. We're rock and roll and they're punks. No talent, and we're going to send you boys home crying. It's Thanksgiving. We're going to have turkey dinner early. Then we're going to go get us three turkeys, the jailbirds. Hey, she was going to be up the 42nd Street Revival. We're going to be there. It's going to be gospel. You are looking at the next national tag team champions, and believe me right now, we're on our way to Carrollton, Georgia, and let's get it started right there, Carrollton. It'll be in Carrollton tonight. Right now, I got a wild.